Welcome back to the Future Quake Show. I am Dr. Future. And I'm Tom Bionic. And this week, we have a great guest. We have Colette Bercou, mm-hmm. who is the uh, founder and CEO of Free for Life Ministries here in Nashville. And we're going to talk about the crisis of human trafficking worldwide. This is an incredible travesty, and I'm glad that we have a chance to talk with her. And we've got a lot of shows, so we're so going to cut away go. real quick. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is Colette uh, Bercou, and uh, we'll be right back to talk about it on Future Quake. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Quake Show. I am Dr. Future. And I am Tom Bionic. And here we are here with a new friend of our show, uh, with Miss Colette Bercou, who is the founder and CEO of Free for Life Ministries. And we're going to talk uh, today about... Uh, the whole issue of human trafficking, both within the U.S. and worldwide, and uh, what uh, responsibilities do Christians particularly have in in recognizing this issue and confronting it and addressing it. And I want to thank you, Colette, for uh, joining us today on the Future Quake Show. Great. Thanks so much, Dr. Future. Hi, Tom. Hey. (laughs) Well, I want to thank Tom for putting us in touch with you, Colette, because uh, he he has said uh, that we definitely need to have you on and quickly. And uh, we had originally uh, penciled you in uh, in October if you were going to be available after we had our, our, our current uh, lineup of guests through. But um, we had a situation where a sudden opening appeared, and I want to just want to thank you uh, on behalf of all of our listeners yeah. for you to step in with no notice whatsoever. Uh, to step in with a quick opportunity we had on the spot uh, to come in. We just really appreciate you sort of going on the fly with us tonight. Yeah. No problem at all. You know, I mean, it just really shows you that this is the heart of God. This is something that your listeners really need to be aware of. You know, one of the things I want to say even before we get started is that people are going to be hearing numbers and they're going to think that this is astronomical, this can't be happening, but please, please, like, stay with us through the, yeah. the whole show and, and, you know, be praying as you're listening that God would speak to your heart about this. Well, I, I know uh, Stalin, I believe, was the one who said that uh, uh, one death is a tragedy, a million is just a t- statistic. But in this case, it's important for people to know the scale and the magnitude yeah. that we're going to talk about in this. But at the same mm-hmm. time, also remember, each of these numbers is a human being. Uh, yeah. It could be your son or daughter, mm-hmm. a person mm-hmm. with dreams and aspirations and goals for the future. Each each person is someone who Christ has died for mm-hmm. and gave his life for. And we need to keep that uh, in mind because... The, the scale of what you're going to share with us is just going to be uh, totally boggling, but it's something we cannot ignore and sweep under the rug. Mm-hmm. But to get started in our discussion, can you share with our listeners just a little bit about uh, your background? Uh, let us know a little bit about you, and um, right up to the time that you really got involved in this particular issue, just share this a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, I'm a Canadian. I was born in Canada and, and uh, now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, absolutely love it down here in the south. Um, and uh, basically, I grew up in the music industry and as an artist my whole life, and now I'm a decorative painter by trade, but I also I've sort of changed over to canvas painting now. So I really want people to hear that because, you know, so often we go, oh, my goodness, I'm not an expert. Uh, what can I do? Is You know, you plus the Lord is an army right there, and you don't have to be an expert. You just have to have the heart of God. Wow. Yeah. So, so you're a, yet another person uh, affiliated with the Future Quake Show who has a connection in uh, the artist community, and it's wonderful to have you on as, as a part of it. I know uh, our own co-host here has uh, a lot of credentials in the music field as well. Yeah. And right. I don't know if the Lord gives you all a special sensitivity to, to use for the rest of us in the body or not, you know, to... It's kind of like a vow of poverty most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it. Yeah. That is, yeah. <laughs> so, so now, is there any subject matter that you hope to focus in in your artwork? Um, you know, I've been doing a series because my husband, uh, who is the, the, the other half of this heartbeat of this ministry... Um, is an emergency room physician, and we went on a medical mission trip to Romania Mm -hmm. and did get to visit one of the safe houses when we were there. But I took pictures of 
of these beautiful old doors and and buildings. And so I've been doing a series of paintings on those lately. Wow, well, that's just fascinating. Hmm. Well, yeah. I, I know our time is short, so I want to jump into our subject area, which is this whole area that's very poorly understood and mm-hmm. very insufficiently mm-hmm. covered in our mm-hmm. media re- regarding this crisis in human trafficking worldwide and in our country. Can you start from the very beginning for our listeners and explain to them what really makes up this whole scope of this this concept of human trafficking? Explain what it is and, and, and what is it that really made it so established here in the modern era? Uh, Well, human trafficking is the buying and selling of human beings, quite simply. It is modern-day slavery. When you hear those words, uh, think of slavery, and people think that slavery was eradicated many, many years ago, but the truth of the matter is, is that there are more people that are being sold right now than there have been at any other time in history. This is an epidemic, and it is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the entire world. There is an estimated 27 million people right now that are being sold in slavery as we're talking, and 13 million of those are children under the age of 18. Now, that's larger than our largest cities in our country. That's bigger than all the residents of New York City. Yeah, like think of basically, yeah, think of New York City being gone. Yeah, you and, know, think and, of think of those that it just like who who misses thirteen million people and nobody blanks an eye. You said that was in the U.S. No, that's in the world. In the world, excuse in, me, in the world. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, in the world, there's an estimated twenty-seven million and thirteen million of those are children. But okay. we have our own numbers here in the United States okay. of America. Um, the the numbers that the State Department puts out. We have a trafficking d- department in the State Department. And they put out a number that is a, uh, approximate. They, these are all approximate numbers because criminals don't do taxes and give numbers. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so they say there's an approximately 15 to 20,000 um, people that are being trafficked into the United States every year. Um, most people that are working in trafficking believe those numbers are low. But let's say that they're accurate. Uh, but those numbers never indicate our own children that are being trafficked on our own soil every single year. The scope of that problem is astronomical. Um, you know, we have a tendency to think of those uh, uh, those children that are out there as prostitutes, but they're they're. Uh, sex traffic victims, and they could be in, the, in um, being prostituted or in child pornography. They could be in stripping um, in clubs under age or, or escort services. And mm. in this country, we have a law in the books that states if you are under the age of 18 and you are being sexually exploited for profit, you are automatically a traffic victim. And so we have to start to change our own mindset to see um, these people as victims rather than as criminals. Uh, And so I'm talking about children now, but uh, we also have um, uh, people that are trafficked here that are, are, you know, young adults. Usually there are people in their 20s, uh, but these could be uh, people like in the sex industry, but they could also be labor trafficked, um, working out on farms, or they could mm. be uh, maids that are being trafficked or working in a, in a restaurant or um, just a myriad of places. You find slavery in every single aspect of our culture nowadays. So, so, so wow. would you say then by definition these are people – who do not ultimately have control over their own fate. There are other people who are making decisions over what they do and how to bring income to some other party, whether it's uh, in the sex industry or through uh, slave labor, you know, uh, being paid a pittance, if anything, or maybe even just giving room and board in exchange for uh, cheap labor. Is this basically a broad definition of what you're talking about? Most definitely, they are. That's exactly what it is. It's people that are being, um, through force, fraud, or coercion, um, forced into a situation that they have no control of. Um, in when you're talking about in the sex industry, um, a lot of those people will will become sick and may even lose their lives as a result of this. Mm-hmm. It is degrading. And it is often life-threatening. 
Yeah, it, it, but but ultimately, it is not a lifestyle of their choice. Which, no, which most definitely does not. not. Does not yeah. fit with the American or Western world mindset that someone could ever be in a situation where they're, you know, in not of their choice. Of course, we hear strange stories on the news about like this guy in, in Austria who had locked up his daughter in the basement for 16 years or some ridiculous period of time. And we, we hear stories like this occasionally, and they just seem to be anomalous, freakish stories. Mm-hmm. But but something akin to that is much, much more commonplace right under our nose and beyond the confines of our sleepy little neighborhoods. That is a reality that is extremely widespread, correct? Or some variation it is, thereof? It, it is a reality. And, you know, I mean, the thing is, is that when you go into Costco or Sam's Club or something and you're leaving and you see the pictures of those children that are missing, where are those children? Mm-hmm. You know, you have to ask yourself that. You know, you think to yourself, surely there would be a, a, just an outcry. I remember the woman that we work with in Romania that runs the safe house we work with there. She said to me, you know, where are people? You think they would be standing on the hilltop screaming for these children and you barely hear a word. Right. And how did that happen? I think that's what we really have to examine. Mm-hmm. How did this happen? Uh, become so epidemic on our watch and are we willing to be so horrified by it that we go you know what I can't even look at that that's too much for me to deal with and so I'll do nothing right uh, rather than saying I cannot tolerate it going on any further one in, in one more day and 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 basically um, to to rise up especially in the church this is the heart of God these people are created in the image of God yeah. he knows every hair on their head he has a purpose and a plan for them and this isn't it well, you know, people in our in our country and in the West, when when you hear the word slavery, you think of something in our history books mm-hmm. that goes back in in another day and era. And in fact, it, it it's so primitive that it's even hard for us to take ourselves back that far. We, uh, although I find it very ironic that of the Western nations, I believe the United States was the last one to actually outlaw slavery. I believe mm-hmm. uh, Mexico was well before uh, the United States really? was. Yeah. Uh, In fact, that was part of the whole battle with Texas is that I think they wanted to keep their slaves and Mexico Mm -hmm. had freed their slaves. But it's still something that we picture long, long ago, far, far away. Or we think back to the ancient world when one empire would conquer another empire and they would take large parts of the people as slaves and transport them. But that has never stopped. And if anything, with modern society, now we have uh, modern tools and technology. If anything, that's increased, has it not? Most definitely, this is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. I mean, I'm going to say that again. The fastest growing criminal enterprise in the entire world is the buying and selling of human beings. They make an estimated $34 billion a year from this. This is big business. And that's why it's so epidemic and why it is now overtaken guns in the last two years and is right behind drugs because as a drug dealer, I can sell you drugs or as a gun dealer, I can sell you guns um, one gun at a time, one drug at a time. But the truth is if you sell a human being, you can sell that person literally 20, 30 times a day. Man. Think about that. I mean, really think about that. And in you know, and I'm I talk a lot about sex trafficking portion because that's primarily what we deal with in our ministry. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, think about what it would be like as a 12-year-old child to be raped once. Now think about what it would be like as a 12-year-old child to be raped 30 times a day. And traffickers don't take a day off for holidays. And you know, with, and with are, no hope with no hope for it to end. Yes, and no hope for it to end. And why would there be? There was nobody that came yesterday. Nobody seems to know I'm even here. Um, why would I think that this is going to end?